Hi, everybody. How are you doing uh, this beautiful Sunday afternoon? The sun is shining. Uh, the weather is perfect. And um, I started Sunday dinners back up again during COVID. And uh, it was nice to just bring my family together and be able to cook and, and feel normal in this new normal. So um, today, one of my I'm going to be doing one of my favorite recipes, uh, something that I really like to, to have probably about once a month uh, if I can. So today's recipe that I'll be doing with you um, is gonna be cabbage roll soup. Cabbage roll soup is super easy. Um, lots of different uh, vegetable uh, and inexpensive ingredients that go into it. Some seasoning, some sugar, uh, and um, yes, and some broth and stuff and mixing everything together. So I was kind of debating on which meat I was going to use uh, for this particular recipe. Um, I had switched from regular hamburger meat to turkey um, just for the lower fat content and cholesterol and stuff in it. Uh, but when she had mentioned the uh, the moose there, I said, you know what? I have two uh, one pound packages of moose hamburger in my freezer. And so today we're using moose hamburger in the cabbage um, roll soup, which is awesome. So um, that's all I have left from, you know, the moose that we had got uh, some meat from from this year. So I'm just going to get down to it. So um, I'll go through all the ingredients that are in the cabbage roll soup. Some of the seasoning agents I use, um, I started using Epicure products uh, probably a year ago, a little over a year ago. Um, I like it for a variety of reasons. Um, it's a Canadian company uh, out in, in uh, BC. Uh, it has the lowest sodium content uh, of any other uh, product that's out there. And I use a ton of different seasoning agents from all different brands. Um, and just for flavor, uh, more than anything, I guess the flavor. Uh, not only the flavor, but the aroma in in each of the bottles, um, being able to read the ingredients on the bottle, I think is probably the most um, amazing part of it and knowing that I, I recognize everything that's in there. So let's just start off as to what goes into um, into the cabbage roll soup. And for those of you who do have a slow cooker, um, I'm just using a four quart slow cooker. Um, I have four different size uh, slow cookers, but there's just um, two of us at home now. And uh, so the four quart slow cooker works perfectly fine for us to be able to, to have supper for us and then have leftovers, uh, lunch for leftovers for tomorrow when I go to work. So, um, the first thing would be the cabbage. Uh, we I got into gardening during COVID um, and we um, made some raised beds out behind our cottage, which is where I'm at. I'm not actually in community. I'm actually at our cottage here in Framboise. And uh, we have four raised beds and we're growing about 20, 22 different vegetables, 11 different fresh herbs right on my deck, uh, some corn, um, and some, um, some sunflowers. Uh, my, my four-year-old granddaughter is also gardening as well. She has a, an old McDonald farm, um, where she has to water and maintain and weed and, 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 you know, keep up to her gardening. So, um, food security, food sovereignty, and, and passing on these skills is really important, not only to grow your own food, but to be very uh, conscious of what it looks like um, and taking away that idea that um, food grows in Walmart or Sobeys uh, or Atlantic Superstore, no frills. I think the quality of vegetables and knowing where your food comes from is super uh, important. So, um, you know, as the weeks go on, I can't wait to be able to go out into my garden, which is growing really well, and just take fresh vegetables right out of my garden for the recipes over the next four weeks. So I'm super excited. So I guess I'll get right down to the ingredients. So um, I chose to do a uh, red cabbage instead of green cabbage for a couple reasons. So red cabbage, um, then there's not much difference between red and green, actually, when you're doing comparisons of both of the, um, the cabbages. Uh, I think the, the green has a little bit more vitamin K than the, the red one does. But as for taste and cooking quality and stuff, they're pretty much the same. The red can kind of discolor um, some of your food sometime if you have some type of acidic in, in the recipe, um, which we will from the tomato uh, 
uh, from the diced tomatoes. So, but other than that, it works pretty good and um, it gets sweeter. So it cooks sweeter than the green cabbage. So I like my cabbage roll or cabbage roll soup to have a little bit more of a sweeter taste to it. Um, I grew up disliking cabbage to a T, like totally. If my grandmother was cooking it, I was so picking out the cabbage. But as I grew, grew older and I started to, um, you know, cook more for my own family and myself, I realized that this is like a secret gold uh, vegetable to have in your fridge. And it has so many health benefits to it. I mean, there's like 15, 12 to 15 different health benefits just to eat cabbage alone. Um, and the other reason why I chose to, to, to uh, use red cabbages, um, I have some uh, digestive issues for health wise. And so uh, it's a really great anti-inflammatory. So um, yeah, so just a, a half a head of red cabbage here. One can of no salt added diced tomatoes uh, is another uh, ingredient. Um, one small can of uh, tomato paste. Uh, and I chose the herb and spices. I, I, I love a flavorful meal. So as much flavor that I can put in there as possible is, is even better. Um, I use the um, garlic and onion uh, Epicure bottle here, but um, three garlic cloves would be normally what you would use in, in this recipe. Um, I mix up my beef and my vegetable broth. So the difference in mixing them for this cabbage roll soup is that the beef broth I find has more of a thicker, um, uh, kind of a creamier kind of texture to it that really absorbs the, um, brings out the flavor from the meat that you're cooking. And then so yeah, I, I go between the both. So I'll, I'll show you how I mix them together. Um, Italian seasoning is another one. You could use parsley. Parsley works just as well. I, I actually use parsley in a lot of my recipes, but, um, but Italian seasoning is something that I put into this one too. Um, some long grain white rice is another ingredient. Red pepper and just a regular yellow onion. So those are all the ingredients that we'll be putting into um, the recipe. So we'll just get down to business now. I thought, um, how am I gonna do the show in an hour? How am I gonna be able to, to prep and cook and and put it into the slow cooker? Um, then at least you have a good head start as to you know, what um, is expected for uh, to make this recipe successful. So let's get down to business. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, is there any questions or anything that you'd like to know beforehand? Um, I'll do my measurements out as, uh, as we go to, no? Okay, so um, the first thing I like to start off with is the cutting up of the, um, the cabbage. So I cut out with a V kind of shape here of the rind that's here because otherwise it's like really hard to cut your cabbage. So if you get rid of that, I find it's like a, a lot easier and looser cut um, for your cabbage. And I cut it into the kind of a bite size uh, sizes of cabbage. And you need a total of three cups uh, of chopped up cabbage to put in this particular recipe. Just go ahead and cut it. I uh, was telling my granddaughter today that I was doing the uh, cooking show and she was so devastated that I was doing this without her. She, um, during COVID, we had uh, started up something called the, the Juju and G. Because it's important for her and I for quality time and bonding to be able to do things together and uh, cooking and stuff in the kitchen is something that's really important for me. And, uh, you know, being able to teach her all these skills like my grandmother taught me when I was a young girl uh, is really important to pass on to her. So, you know, part of that intergenerational learning uh, and passing on of skills. 
she's she's a pretty good um you know prepper food prepper and cook in the kitchen she uh she'll definitely be having her own cooking shows sooner or later i'm pretty sure so um i'm just going through with cutting it all um i'll bring it up to the screen there so you can see it in a second here And the great thing about cooking with cabbage too, especially in the slow cooker um, and cutting it to the to the bite-sized pieces is um, it gets softer, but it doesn't disintegrate. So it doesn't just, you know, come apart really easy, easily and doesn't sh keep its form. Um, the, the cabbage really does and it keeps its flavor and stuff. So it is super good. So... This is three cups, so I can't find my one cup measuring uh, cup, so I'm just going to be using the half a cup that I have here, so um, that's six of them. So there is half, and there is one. So this is all the cabbage that's chopped up now. I don't know if you can see that there. Just in you know bite-sized pieces. If there's any extra, um, I just use it for making homemade coleslaw, which is what we had tonight. So there's another one. That's two cups. Two and a half and three. So. There's still a little bit of cabbage left from this half. Uh, and this was a small head of cabbage too. So I'll leave that aside for now. Um, I like to add extra cabbage, especially if there's, uh, you know, some room still left in my slow cooker. So, um, but we'll see as we put the ingredients into the slow cooker. So one of the things I, I, um, I say in my classes is to always cook the meat that you're cooking with on the bottom of your slow cooker. So, um, so it has all of the heat uh, directly to it and it cooks first and your vegetables will cook after. So um, I'll be placing this uh, one pound of um, moose meat on the bottom um, of the slow cooker. And then I'll be putting all the ingredients on top of it, adding the liquid last and then um, setting it on on low and then it'll cook for the next eight hours and, and not taking the cover off. So for every time um, you're tempted to want to uh, open the cover, you actually lose about a half hour of cooking time. So um, I always tell my students in my class to not take off the cover as tempted as you are to, um, you know, taste it or stir it because it doesn't look like it's all covered or anything. Um, cooking on the stove and cooking with a slow cooker are, are two different kind of cooking methods. Um, gr you know, growing up and cooking in the kitchen and stuff on the stove, we're always taught to, you know, continuously stir so it doesn't burn. Um, make sure the liquid is well over, um, you know, what you're cooking so that it boils and everything cooks all thoroughly. But slow cooker is the opposite. Uh, once you put that cover on and you, and you don't have to cover your food totally over, um, even if it, it goes right to um, the liquid, it's just a little bit over uh, the uh, the food in your slow cooker. That works perfectly fine. All the um, the the cooking from all around the slow cooker will cook it evenly. So, yeah, that's that. So the next one is celery. So um, it calls for one cup of celery so it usually comes out to about three or four stalks of celery and uh, I just cut the tops off um, I cut the bottoms to where the white kind of uh, meets the green so you get more of the flavor uh, in the green stalks so and again those are um, Probably about uh, bite size too. They're they're cut about this size. Uh, 
I love uh, hearing the crunch in fresh vegetables. It's just an amazing sound. So, and it's in one of my classes, we talk about the, the health benefits and the emotional benefits of um, food. The, um, you know, the smell of food, uh, the nostalgic feeling you get from food, uh, especially, you know, growing up and your mother or your grandmother, uh, you know, some of your favorite recipes, just, you know, bringing back positive um, memories uh, and just the sound of it, the, the sound of the crunch of, of fresh vegetables, um, you know, that you're cooking with and stuff. It's just an, an amazing experience. So there is half. So that's. And then the next one is one. So three stalks um, should equal out to one cup of uh, chopped up celery for you to add to your bowl. So that is that. And it calls for sorry, I didn't get to have supper, so um, celery is going to keep me going by right now. The next thing is um, just a red pepper. So um, about a quarter of um, kind of a large size uh, red pepper will equate out to a diced half a cup of red pepper. So I just cut out, um, there was a trick, one of the, one of the courses I had delivered uh, to um, uh, an elder elder women's group out in Glace Bay. Um, they were professionals. Like I didn't have to show them or teach them anything. They were teaching me. They were schooling me on um, cutting, slicing, dicing, and cooking. I don't even know why they took my course. I think just for fun. And uh, this uh, woman had come over and she said, uh, "This is how you you cut peppers. And never mind that careful slicing and dicing. This is how you do it." So she grabbed a full pepper. She punched the top of the pepper, pushed it in, um, kind of cracked it in half, and then she just did it like so fast. It was amazing. So ever since then, I have always pushed the top in, uh, cracked it in half, and then start cutting from there. Um, I guess it's a it's a time saver. I guess I don't know, but ever since I've been amazed, and I've always used that uh, skill that I had learned. Um, the great thing about offering slow cook dream classes is um, the things you learn. So, uh, a normal slow cook dream course um, would run over five weeks, and it would be at two hour sessions. Um, I would come in with the slow cookers and I would come in with all the groceries and the ingredients and that you would need, um, you know, explain what to expect over the four weeks. Um, and each week, you know, the, the demand of just cutting and slicing and dicing and then talking and sharing and having um, lessons to learn over those four weeks. And uh, the last week is um, I ask for people to write out an impact statement. Just what have you learned? What was your favorite recipe over the, um, the four weeks, five weeks? And, um, you know, let me know, you know the positive or the negative um, of this course. Right. And I, I learned so much from other people. Uh, you know, I don't like this ingredient. I add this. I grew up putting this into the uh, this particular recipe um rather than this uh and so I, i've learned a lot uh over the last five years of delivering this workshop so it's great so i just uh filled up half a cup of the red pepper here and the next is a cup of carrot so um i have uh, a medium size oh, well, large size carrot here and so i like to um slice them uh a little bit thinner i find carrots once they um are cooked in the the tomato sauce they um they cook slower so the thinner i find that i slice them into the cabbage soup especially because you've added tomato soup um will help uh, them cook faster and more evenly in that eight hours Oh, yes, Gigi is, uh, loves the kitchen, loves to cook. She, um, she She's going to probably have her own show, I'm sure. <laughs> she's very uh, animated to her audience. 
She loves um, everything in the kitchen. She's very independent and, and strong minded. And I love that about her. And at four years old, she is, um, you know, people would be panicking. Oh, my goodness, you're giving her a, a peeler for the carrots. I said, well, she's going to learn. She And she has to learn. That's one of the things that, of why I deliver this course, too, is um, cooking uh, and food prepping is a lost skill. Uh, I grew up in a time with my grandmother that taught me everything from scratch cooking. Just amazed. Like I would open the cupboards or the fridge and, and say, there's nothing to eat. Um, that was the worst thing that you could say uh, to your grandmother, that, that there was nothing to eat. Um, it uh, Because she would say, I, I see five things that I could cook here. And I'm looking in the cupboard in the fridge going, what do you see that I don't see? <laughs> but it was just having that talent, right, of just saying, I can mix this and this and this together, you know, add this seasoning in it and it'd be the most amazing meal and there'd be no meat, uh, the most amazing meal. And it would just be three ingredients. So I learned really young um, that flavor and experience in the kitchen um, to make food be a, a rewarding experience. Uh, what are we cooking today? We're cooking cabbage roll soup today. Um, it's, uh, I went through the beginning of uh, the, the show with just kind of running through the ingredients, but um, I can run it through right quick for you, for those of you who are joining a little bit later. So it's uh, um, red cabbage, uh, celery, uh, red pepper, onion, um, diced tomatoes, uh, tomato paste, some garlic, some diced garlic, uh, and both vegetable and beef broth, um, some brown sugar, and some granulated sugar, and some long grain white rice, Italian seasoning, and one pound of um, grounded hamburger of your choice. Uh, I usually, the recipe usually calls for one pound of lean hamburger, um, but I had switched to using turkey instead, but today we're using moose meat. So um, I love moose meat and I have two one pounds left, so I just wanted to be able to use it in one of the most flavorful recipes that I have. So um, actually I'll continue cooking the uh, carrot here. So it calls for a one cup of carrots. So when I cut them to about this, this kind of like, a little bit thicker than a loony, I guess I would say. Um, nice description for it. So just filling out my half a cup here. So it's there. And there. Look how beautiful that looks all together so far. Just the, the red cabbage, the celery, the red bell pepper, the um, the carrots. Like, it's just beautiful. Um, I mean, it just looks like a salad right there. So next is the onion. So um, like most people on the planet, I have heard many different suggestions and um, tips on how to cut an onion without crying, uh, how to cut an onion without it just the smell being, you know, overbearing and just having to step away. Um, so I had switched to uh, a garlic and onion um, Epicure mix where it just takes away that cutting and that smell of it all together. But for today, I'll, I'll um, cut a little bit of fresh onion because I just I love the taste of onion and everything and it's funny all the things I hated growing up for food wise cabbage um, onions all these things I love today I didn't appreciate food um, like I should have back then like I do now I have a true appreciation for food um, and its flavors uh, my kids will tell you like I love to cook I you know showing recipes and food prepping to my kids all the time and uh, this recipe calls for um, one cup of diced onion. And I took a large one um, 
and just cut it in half. And so that's what I'm using here. You could use a whole onion, depending. Some people really love onions. Um, it, and it doesn't mean that it's going to, you know, be mess up your recipe or anything. Um, and that's one of the things I, I say in my workshops, too. When I started doing these workshops, I wanted to show people the trick that my grandmother told me that time when I was a kid, when I looked at the cupboard and I said, there's nothing to eat. And she said, I can see three to five things that I could make a, a full meal. And she would just without even thinking, she just would grab things and by memory, by just knowing food the way she did would make you would make these amazingly tasting meals. So um, I, I want people to know that you can't necessarily mess up a meal in the kitchen. Um, yes, you can burn it. Yes, you can add um, way too much pepper or something. But when it comes to vegetables, like those type of ingredients adding to, it doesn't really take away. Uh, and my chef friends will probably definitely um, throw me in the fire for me saying that. But for somebody who grew up in a home um, that seen its uh, abundance or little bit of food, and still to come out with amazing recipes. I see food from a totally different perspective. And a lot of the audiences that I have worked with are people who come from low income homes, uh, single parent homes that have limited incomes. And when it comes to food, I find that's the first cut that people make. So how could we make our dollar stretch? How could we feed our families um, nutritious, healthy meals? Because the food that you eat is directly linked to your physical health, to your mental health, to your emotional well-being, to everything. Uh, knowing that you are food secure, knowing that at the end of the day, when your kids get off the bus and they're coming home, that they have they walk in the door and they have this amazing smell that they come to. Um, one of my clients from uh, that had taken the workshop with me had said she had invited over her mom. I think it was out in Dartmouth invited her mom over for supper. And so she was preparing and cooking one of our slow cooker meals. And her mom walked in the door and was like, whoa, what is that amazing smell? And she said the, pr the pride that she had, that she had prepped that meal. She had cooked that meal for her and her family and her mom. And for her mom to have that um, experience and that expression of experience to her, she said, totally made her day. She said, you, you gave me something that I, I, I thought I never had. And uh, so I was pretty happy with that. Um, I peel away the top layer of the, uh, the onion um, right to its kind of thin membrane. And I peel, peel that off. And so I'm just... Uh, and I, I slice it um, straight so you have these long slices on there. And then I cut it the other way so that the small pieces uh, of onion come out there. I totally forgot to check to see if I was on time. <laughs> oh, how, that's a really great question. So um, anything that's dried is... Uh, compared to fresh is usually half. So um, for the half of a fresh onion, half a cup of fresh, no, sorry, a one cup of freshly cut onion would come out to be about um, two tablespoons of Epicure um, dehydrated, or even a tablespoon of dehydrated onion um, uh, from Epicure here. That's a great question. Sorry about that. As you can tell, I have like tons of Epicure products. So uh, when you have friends and family that are into Epicure, you try to support them. And it, it's an amazing product. I'm really impressed with uh, with Epicure's um, products. So there is my onions all chopped up. I'm just adding that to there now. So look at that. Just look at all the color of the cabbage and the carrots and the celery and the onion and the red pepper. Just amazing. So I'm just going to open up the... hamburger. I'm going to put that on the bottom right now. So 
So I just put the uh, one pound of um, moose meat hamburger on the bottom of my slow cooker now. And I get this question all the time. Um, can you cook from frozen? Uh, yes, you can. I always do. Um, and uh, I mean, you can cook from fresh, it, uh, you know, fresh defrosted uh, meat as well. But uh, I've always cooked from frozen and everything comes out perfectly fine. But if you want to defrost it in the fridge and then put it into your slow cooker that morning before you go to work, that works perfectly fine too. So the next part here is, uh, there's the slow cooker. Just gonna put all of that that we just finished dicing into the slow cooker on top of the meat. So this part is just adding the ingredients. So if you were not using Epicure um, uh, broth mix and you were just using uh, the container uh, or packages of broth, then it would be one of those um, kind of one liter packages. And I would use two of those. So it, it uh, should come up to about four or five cups that you add to it. Um, but using these, I use uh, two tablespoons of beef broth and I use two tablespoons of the vegetable broth Epicure and then I add the water to it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the um, garlic Epicure seasoning and I put in about half a teaspoon. This is the easy part. This is just the, the adding of the spices now. And then it is one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. Just sprinkle it all around. Can opener, where are you? There we go. So just opening up the little tomato paste that I have. And this particular one that I have um, has the fine herbs and spices flavoring, seasoning flavoring to it. Because we love flavor in our food. And I'm just opening up the um, one can. It is 796 milliliters of diced tomatoes. I have 27 tomato plants growing in my um, garden right now. So I can't wait until summer when I don't have to buy this stuff anymore. And I heard that ragu was going out of business or shutting down or something. So maybe I have to start experimenting with some uh, pasta sauce uh, experimental products to fill the market N not that i'm promoting ragu or anything um but just saying i have lots of tomato plants that will be um giving me lots of tomatoes this summer <laughs> yes i love epicure it is an amazing product i'm i love that it's canadian i love that it's uh women led um a mother and a daughter uh, I love the uh, flavor of it. The quality of the product is, is you get your money's worth for it. Uh, it goes a long way. And just being able to look at the ingredients on there, like this is the vegetable broth, you know, onions, carrot, uh, nutritional yeast, uh, vitamin B6, red bell pepper, herbs, sea salt, celery seed, black pepper, just amazing. So I'm just adding the uh, can of diced tomatoes now. So this is, I'm just trying to mix it all around here. So just doing the two tablespoons of the beef broth now.
but if you'd like to just use the one um, uh, broth, that's perfectly fine. This is just me for preference for flavoring. Um, mixing the vegetable broth and the beef broth. I'm telling you, it, it's amazing uh, how you mix the two together. Oh, I just, I got a, what if you can see that? Like this is the vegetable broth. Like look at the coloring on that. It's just beautiful. I I'm, I love coloring in food. It just totally makes my day. Doing the two. And now the four cups of water. So that's the only thing I forgot. So just, uh, does anybody have any other questions so far? I'm not sure if I'm moving too fast. I'm trying to be time cognizant here, looking that it's almost 5.30. So I'm trying to move along, uh, you know, with the recipe so you can see everything. But if you have any questions, please ask me. Um, so there's the one. Oh, this is just amazing. You uh, you can cook this on the stove as well in in a, in a large pot, um, but I love love to cook it in a slow cooker because it's just you, you know kind of out of sight, out of mind. You put everything together, you throw everything together, and you throw it into the slow cooker, and you put it on low for eight hours, and it's done. And it's it, it's um, I, I love the slow cooker. Um, not that it makes any less of a mess in here because it's just as much of a mess uh, in my kitchen. If you could see my whole table right now. Um, but, uh, you know, just not having to take a whole lot of things uh, and cooking on the stove and be constantly stirring and, um, you know, checking on it. It's just in there and it's doing its thing. So the last thing that we put in here is the half a cup of brown sugar. is just amazing I love it so the last thing for it um, which I don't add uh, right now is the long grain white rice um, so I find when I put the long grain rice in there I need a larger slow cooker so I would move it up from a four quart to a six quart um, slow cooker just because the the rice will just absorb up all the liquids in there and it then it's not so much of a soup a cabbage roll soup it's like really thick and um you know uh, you could tell it's kind of pasty and stuff so i cook the long grain rice separate um on the stove so you know once this cooks for eight hours on low um then i would you know the last half an hour or something cook the uh long green rice on the stove and then add it to it after so once you drain it and stuff and and it's all dehydrated um then i would add it to the soup mixture um after the eight hours of it cooking so it doesn't drain so much of the liquid away from your cabbage roll soup and and could still have that beautiful soup um texture to it which is what you're looking for so everything is in the slow cooker now and it's just at the top. I wonder if I can move everything aside here. And that's kind of where it's at right now. It's almost at the top of 
the uh, slow cooker. So I would just put on the cover. And I'll put it on low for the next eight hours. And this will be what we'll have for lunch and supper for tomorrow. So that is it, folks. That is the cabbage roll soup. Um, it is uh, super delicious. It's hearty. There's tons of fiber in cabbage. Uh, you know, in, in all of this right here, you have a ton of nutrient nutritional value in there. Um, with all the vegetables that you have in there. Uh, moose meat uh, is in there and then the broth too and very minimal sodium. I hate to cook with salt and pepper. I think that's uh, one thing you should be throwing out of your kitchen when it comes to cooking. Uh, I love to, to add tons of seasoning. I grew up with a grandmother that had a spice rack on the wall um, and used it for everything. So uh, I have like 11 or 12 different uh, herb, fresh herbs growing right now. Um, and can't wait to be able to start using it in my kitchen once, once everything um grows the way it should so i hope you guys enjoy the show i this is my first time doing it in this kind of manner i usually do, do the facebook live um either solo or with my granddaughter so having a different pace uh was definitely different um and uh you know i i don't know what we'll be cooking for the next three weeks um i like it for it to be a surprise each week um but maybe I should uh, give a little bit of a warning. So if people want to get the ingredients, then they can, you know, food prep with me uh, at this time and, and cook at the same time. So I guess next week we will make uh, one of my favorite, which is um, chicken noodle soup. Uh, only five ingredients in there. Uh, you know, chicken, celery, carrots, onion, and broth. Um, just regular vegetable broth. So if you, oh, and noodles, sorry about that. Uh, and some noodles, so that makes six. Um, so yeah, uh, if you guys wanna get those ingredients for next week, then we'll be making chicken noodle soup next Sunday. So thank you so much for watching guys. This was so much fun. I thank you so much Rebecca for this opportunity to share um, one of the slow cooked dream recipes uh, and giving me a platform to be able to share with some amazing people all across the world. Um, I'm just amazed at seeing the audience from different parts of the world. This is so great. So thank you so much, Rebecca. And um, if there's any questions, um, I think you can uh, go on my Facebook page uh, or you can go through some uh, through Rebecca here. And uh, please share uh, for your op for your chance to uh, win a crock pot. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, good night and happy eating. I don't know I'm supposed to stop it. <laughs>
can't find any sugar. Oh, oh there it is. The cleanup is always the funnest. Putting all the scraps away in your compost bin. Printing off. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed it. Where did she go? Oh. That was awesome. Oh, thank you. I had lots of fun and I didn't feel rushed or um, stressed out out of it all. It, it, it flowed really nice. I think an hour was definitely, 45 minutes to an hour was definitely enough time for it. Uh, we're still live. Oh, well, <laughs> I hope I moved at a good pace for everybody too. Uh, I, I kind of get carried away sometimes because I know what to do right so it's like i forget that i have to slow down sometimes because i remember teaching a course yeah. and then i've never cut an onion before i've never cut a uh, celery before I, I don't know what it tastes like so it's like here like it's like this here have a, a try so um a reminder of kind of slowing down and doing it at a pace for people is uh is good you did awesome thank good. you very much. I wish you were closer. I'd be sharing. And how do you, uh, you say we lolin in Mulalin? <laughs> Trust me, we lolin. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nadine, for your first show. This went off with like no hiccups. And at Ripple Effects, we're all about transparency. So your viewers are growing with you and that you had so many viewers tonight. So really? thank you, viewers. Thank you so much for your support, for sharing this in your news feed. Yeah. And they're watching right now because we have nothing like this is all fun. So we were in the kitchen. Eating. If you share this in your news feed, you guys, I take down your name and you're entered. Nadine's going to be doing four shows the next four Sundays. So three more. Mm -hmm. And your name, if you enter, share it. Every time you like it or share it, your name is entered for the crock pot. And that's a donation from Ripple Effects. So thanks for supporting us. And thanks for supporting Nadine's show. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Have a fabulous night. Thanks, Nadine, again. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you.